this is Zach Panther here and welcome to my channel and today I will be reviewing the Star Wars sideshow Barber Fett in all his glory. Okay so let's start off with the box then. The box is very straightforward and ordinary. Here is the word Disney on the bottom left hand side of the box. And at the back of the box we have a better picture of Barber Fett. When I removed the Boba Fett Sideshow box from the packaging. I was rather surprised how narrow the box was. Didn't feel like there was much of a figure in there. Inside the box we have a protective cover and another picture of Boba Fett. And at the side we have three lightsabers. When I first saw Boba Fett in the box packaged like this I was a bit unsure. I saw the head and I thought hmm is that a bit too big or is that just me? Then the material coming down from the torso, uh, waist and to the knees I thought Mm, I'm not sure I'm liking this so far, but I will give you my honest opinion once I have finished the review. And here is Fett in the plastic tray covering with all his accessories. And here he is, standing outside of his box. When I saw the pictures online I thought, this is the figure I do not have and I want this, but now after seeing the material, I'm not so sure I'm all that keen on it. So let's look at all the accessories then, here is two lightsabers. No doubt that these are two lightsabers belonging to two Jedis that Boba Fett has obviously just killed. And here is three pairs of extra hands. And here we have four guns. The first one on my left is the E3 blaster rifle. The orangey brown blaster, I'm not sure what that is. Then it's the A280 blaster rifle and then finally the DLT-19 heavy blaster rifle. Not a massive amount of detail here. There's hardly any weight to this E3 blaster rifle. Uh, it comes with a little bit of weathering, sort of damage to the gun, as you can see here. Can't say much for this brown small blaster here. Not a lot of detail, very bland. Black dirt, I think that is, on the handle there. And this is where I'm going to have to start finding some faults. From Sideshow, I expect a lot more features and detail to these guns. Uh, there isn't anything I can, good I can say about it, really. This heavy blaster rifle is my favourite of the lot of them, and you can see why. It has a lot of cloth wrapped around the barrel of the gun, and there's a leather strap and material in the inside of the strap. A lot of detail here, and I like it. The DLT-19 was a model of a blaster rifle manufactured by Blastech Industries. They were used by the Stormtroopers, I believe. And here we have one jetpack, and I have to say I quite like it, actually. It's got good scratches and weathering damage to the back of the jetpack and the front. And this is the turbo-projected magnetic grappling hook. Not sure what the red is supposed to be. I would imagine it was paint of what it looked like before rubbing off. The directional thrusters are articulated and they move round. I'm not sure if the turbo projected magnetic grappling hook is supposed to be removable, but mine seems to unscrew. I'm not sure really why anyone would want to remove it. And on the top of the jetpack there are hooks, which I would imagine hooks into the back of Barber Fett. And here is a few buttons below. Back to the rest of the accessories then, here is a third lightsaber and a dagger. I'm not overly impressed, the dagger is not metal and the lightsaber is just as simple as the others. The figure's base is lacking strong features, no characteristics, therefore it is completely uninteresting. There's not even a Star Wars logo on the base. But underneath the base, we do have a Star Wars logo, but what would be the point in that where we can't see it? We'd be better off on the top. And last of all, here is a spare peg in case we break any of the other pegs. But we only get one. So back to the figure now, we get an overall look of Barber Fett himself. Bear in mind, he is not posed in any position whatsoever. This is a look of Boba Fett on his right hand side. And here is a rear view of Boba Fett. And here's a look of Boba Fett on his left side.
Right, so if we go to the front of the figure and lift up the material, you'll see Barber Fett's armour and it's not metal, it's plastic, it looks brilliant, but the material does have wire in it and I've seen that before in figures, but it does pay off well on this figure. I'm not sure it might be the first sideshow or hot toy figure I've ever had with wiring in the cloaks. I've definitely had it with the statues, but not the hot toys, so it's quite new, relatively new to me anyway. You can see that the back material bends really well and stays up with the helmet. At the back of Barber Fett, you can see that his helmet has sustained quite a lot of scratches and damages. You can move the helmet fluently in all angles. The movement is smooth and works great. Barber Fett's external targeting rangefinder moves up and down. I don't have any qualms with Barber Fett's head and helmet. The detail is brilliant throughout, but the head size I'm still not unsure about, but maybe you can let me know in the comment section below if you think the helmet looks too big. Here's a look at the figure without the helmet, and you can see how well the articulation actually works. The figure has two ball joints for the neck. So let's look at the midsection of Barber Fett underneath the material. Uh, the bad news on this is that the material cannot be removed and this is a bit of an issue for me since purchasing this thing I'm not sure I like the material on the figure so this is going to be a bit of a problem if it can't be removed. You might say watching at home well, why did you buy the figure with the material then because the pictures online just gave it a lot of justice I thought it looked brilliant. I like the utility pouches that you can see here and they're leather but please note don't try and open them because they are actually glued shut. This is his right gauntlet, the fire cord whip with grappling device. If we look round to the back of the figure now, you can see where the leather belt holds the three lightsabers. You can also see here the gun holster for the brown orange blaster that I didn't know the name of. On the back of the armor here, you can see where the silver hooks on the jetpack will hook onto. I really like the uh, armor underneath the material and the accessories. It's a shame that this material is going to cover most of it up. Going back to the jetpack, you can see the silver hooks that are going to line up with the black straps. So on the other side then, you can see the miniature flame projector on his gauntlet. And please note that all the armour, like the shoulder armour etc, is all plastic, there is no die cast parts. For the articulation, the elbow has a double joint so it bends up quite well the figure has ball jointed shoulders but I'm not going to force it too high up because I don't want to break it because these figures tend to be a little bit fragile it's just a look at the lower section you can see where the holders for the lightsabers and the gun holster which is just leather and plastic So you look at the loincloth, it looks like there's a pocket there that you can store some weapons in or tools, but it's not really a pocket, it's made to look like a pocket, but it doesn't really open. Looking at the legs, we have the knee pads, which is not attached to the trousers, it is a separate piece. The knee pads have rocket dart launchers, just like he does in the film. So overall, good detail here. Right, I'm going to have another little moan here. I don't recall of Barber Fett's legs being quite as skinny as that, but I don't know, maybe they were. I didn't really pay attention to his legs. The ankle straps are good though. They are Velcro and are removable if you do want to remove them for any reason. The security blade is impressive. It's not attached to the trouser pocket and can be removed, although I am struggling to remove this and all the other various tools he has in his trouser leg pocket all can be removed. I don't know all the names for these tools but here we have the sonic beam weapon. Here's just a quick look of the knife holder. Yes, and again it's a separate piece. So for the articulation in the legs now, it has ball jointed hips and 
double hinged knees. No problems here. For the ankles and feet, it does have articulation. It will turn to the left and right, but doesn't seem to have any ankle tilters. So back to Barber Fett again from these front. I don't actually have another Barber Fett to compare him to because this is my first Barber Fett figure. But now I've put most of his gear on and I've sorted out that material, moved it to one side a bit, the figure does look pretty damn good now. It makes a hell of a difference, doesn't it, when the figure is posed with all his gear. Oh, mind you, I still need to add on the three lightsabers to his belt. A look of Boba Fett now in attack position with his miniature flame projector. Here's a look of the knife going into the knife holder here. The three lightsabers are finally attached to the belt and the gun is in its gun holster. And here's another look of Boba Fett in another pose. Take your pick what position you like best. Barber Fett with his external targeting rangefinder down. And here is just a more relaxed pose of Barber Fett. I'm liking this figure a lot more as the review goes on. Um, I wasn't that keen on it to begin with, but now he's got his guns, he's got his jetpack on, it does look quite good. Right, so I'm going to score the figure now. Let's go with the negatives and get them out the way. I don't like the torso material, I think it gets in the way of how good the figure looks underneath. I didn't like the two guns, wasn't much detail to them. I felt that Boba Fett should have had a, a bit of die cast to it. The head was a little bit too big for me and lastly the ankle tilters. Because of all these cons I'm going to score this figure a 7.5 out of 10. So for comparison now, here's a look at Boba Fett standing alongside some other sideshow and hot toys that I have in my collection, starting with Darth Vader. Right, this is where I'm going to draw my review to a close, and I'm going to leave you with a few other hot toys standing next to Boba Fett so you get a rough comparison of the sizes. Don't worry about any of the hot toys being a little bit too shorter than Boba Fett because not all of them have bases. I'm going to say goodbye now and thanks for watching. Until next time.